Hi, welcome to GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. Actually got a decent day today with a bit of nice weather. So I'm um, going to do a review on a new lens I got. Now, when I had crop sensor cameras, people used to say to me, why don't you get a wide angle? And the one to get really was the Sigma 10-20. to About second hand, it was about 350 quid. And never really wanted it that much, so I never bought it. When I went full frame, I decided, yeah, something I'd like to have a go at. Now I've had a go with the um, the Nikon 14 to 24, which is a, a stunning lens, but for me it was for its size, which is too heavy um, and too expensive. You know, over a thousand pounds second hand. So I dismissed that. Then I looked at the Nikon 16 to 35. I think it is f4. Again, overpriced in my opinion, over a thousand pounds or new um, second hand probably about seven eight hundred pounds so again, I going to dismiss that then I looked at the Sigma offerings and there wasn't really much about until I found um, that Sigma did an old lens uh, back in the film days and it was when digital had just sort of started getting into digital SLRs and so they, they built the lens for film and tried to sell it for crop sensor cameras but it doesn't really work on a crop sensor camera in my opinion and I've got it here it's the Sigma uh, 15 to 30 D EX aspherical IF um, it's a DG lens which means it's for full frame cameras so I found it online and uh, there's very little information about it other than people using it on crop sensor cameras. There's the odd review, but nothing major. And people go on about horrendous vignetting and lots of problems with the autofocus system and all that. So anyway, I found one, at, um, one of my favorite um, eBay companies, which is called The Photographer's Bag. And they had one for 159.99, so I offered them 150 quid and they accepted it. So, I just want to make that clear 150 quid for a 15 to 30 compared to around a thousand pounds for the 14 to 24 Nikon or the 16 to 35 Nikon and this sits sort of somewhere in the middle 15 to 30 so you've got the extreme wide on a full frame um, and you go past the sort of standard wide which is 24 mil on the full frame um, and pushes it to 30 so it's a nice range so obviously the lens is old, it, it's big, it's well built. Um, the, there's a weird cap system on the front because it's got a cap like that that you take off, but you shouldn't, you take the whole thing off. Um, and it's metal. Now this is metal and that's like a built-in hood. And the reason it has a built-in hood is similar to the, um, the Nikon in that it has this very bulbous um, front element. It's not as big as the Nikon one by any stretch of the imagination but it is bulbous but I think it looks quite funky. It's an f3.5 to 4.5 so yeah it's not a fast 2.8. When you're shooting wide like this I don't feel the need to have an f2.8 lens. I never have on my wide um, lenses. Even when I had the crop sensor cameras I tended to use the 18 to 70 Nikon which was a 3.5 to 4.5 same as this. So I haven't got a problem with that whatsoever. Generally when I'm shooting it, it's going to be at f8, around those that sort of sort of f7 to f11 anyway, so for me, not a problem. Um, it's got some quirks, uh, as do a lot of old Sigma lenses, and this is similar to the 24 to 70 Sigma that I reviewed a long way back, um, which didn't really have a place for a crop sensor camera. Um, but it's got the same, if you want to switch from autofocus to manual focus, you pull the this sort of ring back um, and it's quite nice because when you're shooting normally that ring is free moving so it's quite nice to to use it i've got it here mounted on the d7000 but i don't think this range is really any good or any use on a crop sensor camera i wouldn't buy it for a crop sensor camera because it's not wide enough over the 18 mil standard to be useful um and the range you know 15 to 30 i'd rather have the 18 to 70 and have the extra range um it just doesn't really work on a crop sensor camera i've just got it here because i'm recording on the uh, the full frame d610 size and weight it's um it's quite a chunky looking lens as you can see there but it's not particularly heavy it's um a lot it's probably half the weight of the nikon 14 to 24 for instance um so that's really nice and it's comfortable to hold no issues with the weight of it whatsoever um, the autofocus if I can get this to just 
is it's certainly quick enough, um, but it is a little bit noisy. Yeah, it's nice and quick, but it is a little bit noisy if that's um, a problem for you, yeah, so be it. Because um, it's a driven lens, it's not got built-in motor, it's driven by the camera body. It's, it's absolutely fine though, I don't see any problem with it at all. And even the, the noise, I mean generally when you're shooting you're somewhere near focus anyway, so it's like boom, 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 boom. So again, noise not a problem. When you manually, if you switch it to manual focus, again it's a bit noisy because you're driving everything, but it feels all right, it feels a bit, feels mechanical. It doesn't feel smooth and dampened. Um, it just feels mechanical, um, but I had no problem with that whatsoever. The zoom ring, again, feels mechanical. It's not dampened particularly. Fairly smooth, and again, I've got no problems with that at all. Um, when you zoom, the element does move inside in and out, um, but when you focus it's internal focusing so nothing moves. So what's the image quality like? Well I'm not really into the super wide stuff but since I've been using it I've actually quite enjoyed some of the pictures I get. Some things I take photos of I look at and think Ugh, that's horrible I don't like it but there are a few pictures that I've taken I think actually yeah I quite like that. The, the, the look it gives sometimes because of the distortion and the vignetting it's actually quite um, aesthetically pleasing to the picture and when I'm talking about vignetting and um, let's just clear that up as well yes there is vignetting and you, you know you I get vignetting on my 24 to 85 that I'm filming on now on a full frame you will get it so deal with it don't it's no big deal it's natural vignetting which can be used to your advantage rather than adding vignetting to a photo afterwards if that's your thing you know a bit of natural vignetting just looks so much better in my opinion however if you want to get rid of it it's just so easy nowadays I mean I've got Lightroom 5 I went through the list of lenses couldn't find this one um, clicked on a lens which I think was the Nikon 16 to 35 clicked the correction just the vignetting scale and you just go click bump and it, it goes, the vignetting disappears um, and you can start with your um, image as is. When it comes to the distortion, um, yeah, you can take out some of the distortion, but I think part of the point of these lenses is that they do give you that sort of strange um, perspective sometimes. And if you go close up on someone, it elongates their features. And um, I don't know, it's, it's a lens that you've got to use in the right circumstances, in my opinion. And I've been using it now for a few days and I'm really liking it and I'm enjoying the added dimension it gives my photography. So is it sharp? Well yeah I think so. It's To be honest I don't know why people go on about sharpness nowadays. Um, I've not come across a lens that wasn't sharp for years. I mean I don't know of any lens off the top of my head that isn't sharp. People say the um, the the 20 is it the 24 to 120 Nikon VR thing some people say that's not sharp but I know someone who uses that on a D700 for wedding photography and has never had anyone say all oh, that picture's not sharp so I, I you know sharpness is absolutely fine on this you know you're going to get fall off you're going to get it go a bit funny in the corners it, but it, you know it's a super wide lens it, you're going to get that I mean look at that front element you're going to get issues with that. Um, lens flare, talking of another thing. Now, a lot of people have said the lens flare is, is horrendous and all that, and I've shot this directly into the sun um, to try and deliberately see what the flare does. And yes, you do get lens flare, but it's not horrendous and it's no worse than any other lens I've had, to be honest. And again, it's one of those things you can use to your advantage, or if you know when you're going to get it, then there's things that you can do to prevent it, but it's no problem. So for me, do I spend what is it, £1,500 on the 14 to 24? Absolutely not. Um, do I spend uh, just over £1,000 on the 16 to 35 F4? Pfft, no, it's just too much. 150 quid. What's the worst that can happen? 150 quid is that I use it for six months and I'll sell it for 150 quid. You know, that ain't going to lose any more money, is it, this lens, unless I damage it. Um, it's, you know, it's well constructed. It's 
it's probably been around for 10, 15, maybe 20 years already, I don't know. So it's going to go on and on, isn't it? So from a point of view of an investment and money, I think it's a no-brainer. And, um, and why not? You know, if you try it and you don't like it, sell it on. There'll be someone else that wants it and will do great things with it. So um, I cannot, you know, I can't say enough at, at how good for value for money this lens is um it's i mean what can you get for 150 quid lens wise now you know you're looking at old cheapo lenses like my 28 to 100 i've got um you know it cost me like 35 quid these lenses that were f intended for film use you know it, you've just got to try them but some of them like this one work really well some not so much um but uh, as i say I, i'm absolutely 100 percent sold on this so it's definitely going in my kit bag and i'm going to keep it because i think it's one of those lenses that i'm not going to use it that often um, i will at the start because it's new and exciting but i will um i will continue to keep it and um you know i've paid virtually nothing for it so i think that's fantastic so anyway if you want to see the pictures i'll put some up at the end um, but go over to Flickr, and um, if you just search people and search grvo tv on Flickr, you'll find my Flickr page. I don't put thousands of pictures on, so you won't have to go trawling through thousands of photos. I've, I think I've only got about 300 odd pictures on there anyway. And obviously, the most recent ones are, tend to be things that I'm reviewing or new equipment that I've got, like the D610, this lens, and that. Um, so you can look at the full res um, images that are on there and um, you know, have a look at uh, other stuff, leave comments, whatever, um, and obviously subscribe to my YouTube channel. Anyway, this is um, GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. I'll see you soon. Bye.